one more sip of tea from my giant mug, and it's showtime. Mm. Very good. Welcome, everybody. I'm Stuart Cohn, and it's time for some business coaching. Remember, there are no slides. This show is all about you. I do not have a guest expert in the studio with me. I thought it would be fun just to do some one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two or one-on-20 or one-on-30 or one-on-50, whoever's coming in today. I'm grateful you're here. Today is, what's the date? It's March 14th. That's right, and Whole Food is having a celebration of pie, so you can get a discount pizza pie or a cherry pie because it's 3.14 day, so happy pie day. Fascinating. Well, my friends, uh, we are going to start off this uh, business coaching session with something I'd like to do on a regular basis. I want to celebrate you. Now, I know some of you send me emails, sometimes you call me, and you tell me about your successes and your struggles, I love hearing them both, but uh, what I want to do is sort of put you in the spotlight, if you don't mind, even if you turn your mic on for 30 seconds and tell us about a win, something you're feeling good about. Now, Sam Sam has turned on microphone before, and she sent a bunch of things. So, we, so if, if, if there's a shortage of good news, we've got Sam's stuff to share. I've got an interesting story to share, although I think it's, I think it's interesting. It's a lesson learned about selling versus problem solving, it's good news. And Nancy said she's going to step up and volunteer if nobody else does. So if somebody else does, let me know. And you just tell me when your mic to be turned on. I'll turn your mic on mute you. You have to agree to accept it. We'll hear your story. Then I'll shut your mic off. But I want to hear your beautiful voice telling a beautiful story, a victory story, something that's making you feel good. So Michelle's here. Hi, Stuart from Nazareth. Pennsylvania hanging out with you while a snowstorm Stella. Oh, they've given it a name. It's Stella, and it's it's wreaking havoc. Yeah, man, I tell you, my stepson left this morning for Italy. Yes, I know. Tough life. He's in the choir, and they're gonna sing. They're gonna sing in Rome. They're gonna sing in Venice. They're gonna sing in Florence. You know, and they just made it out of uh, Philly this morning, just in time. Thank goodness. Thank he's away for a week singing. My daughter, Danielle, is in Nicaragua on a medical mission trip. She's a physician's assistant student, and she's doing this on her spring break with other students, and I couldn't be more proud, and I just needed to share that with you. So, Michelle, stay warm. The power is going to stay on. We're going to be great. Hans is in the house. Hello, Hans. And so I have your news, too. I'm going to share there, too. But I want to welcome everybody. So many of you haven't typed in hello, and that's okay. I'm so glad you guys are here. We're going to have an action-packed, fun-filled hour. And if no one else steps up, then it's going to be Nancy. And it is Nancy. Okay, so why don't we kick off today's Ask Stuart Hour with Nancy. Nancy, I'm going to unmute your mic right now as we speak. And Nancy, I'm so, thank you, Nancy, for being the first. And, and, and I'm going to unmute you, Nancy, and you're going to share a good news story with everybody. Nancy, are we coming through loud and clear? Oh. Hello? I think she's there. She's getting her mic ready. Are you ready or not ready, Nancy? I could turn all you right. back off. All okay. Right. All right. We're holding. It's all good. All right. Okay, tell you what, everybody, while Nancy is getting her microphone set, because every moment of our together time is val invaluable, Hans, let me know about a group special that Carnival is offering, and it's only valid through March 15th. So listen up, everybody. Thank you, Hans, and I don't know if you guys are aware of this. I know time is tight, but it's called the um, Phenomenal Group Sale. F-U-N-O-M-E-N-A-L, phenomenal. So Hans wanted to let me know, to let you guys know, that it's a really great group promotion. It's called the Fundamental Group Sale through March 15th, and it looks like here TCs are 1 for 10. That's sweet. And $12.50 per person is due per, per, uh, per person. I said that already. Within about two months. So they give you a long time for deposits and low deposits. So increase TC, low deposit, and long time to, to get that deposited. Good news, Hans. Thanks for sharing. Hey, you guys, you hear about specials like this. Let me know or post it on our Facebook group so we can share the good news. Nancy, are you ready? Nancy? Nope. Okay. So we're going to turn. It didn't quite work. 
it didn't quite work, and that's okay. She's going to come back, and we'll try it again. Does anybody have anything? Oh, here we go. A lot of people. Ramona said good morning. Jan says good morning. Uh, welcome. It's cold in Cincinnati, but warm inside. I hear you. That's the way it should be. Lena's here. Everyone saying good morning now. Uh, Nancy said slow connection. She's going to try again in a little bit. That's fine. That's cool. So I want to start off by uh, telling you a couple of quick things. Uh, t Wednesday, I'm doing a webinar. Thanks, Lena, for inspiring that. I was going to uh, record new modules for group boot camp on my own. And uh, Lena sent an invitation for me to participate in a, a webinar for this new uh, Facebook group that you have started, Lena. It's called Travel Agent Hacks. And she said, hey, you want to do a webinar? I said, you know what? Yes. So I'm going to produce, normally I produce these training videos for you. Uh, just I just do it here in my studio, if you will, and then edit them down. I figured, what fun would it be to do it live? I'm going to do it live once. There will be no replay link available to anybody except you, my boot campers. So whoever happens to tune in from the outside world, they're welcome to tune in. I hope they'll see it, love it, want to join boot camp. But basically, these modules will be, I will modulize them into smaller bite-sized units, and I will add it to boot camp for you guys. And it's called Pitch Perfect. It's really, it's all about the presentation. And it's not about presenting to the people who you want to get in the group. It's all about presenting to the group getting the group, nailing the sale, okay? And so we'll talk about first, you know, before, during, and after, getting in the door, uh, right before you go do the presentation, how to do the presentation, what to do right after. I think you're going to love it. I've tried out this material. I've done a couple of keynotes lately, and it was very, very, very well received, and I'm bringing it to boot camp, very excited about adding new content. So you don't have to tune in live tomorrow, Wednesday. You don't, because you're going to see it in boot camp, and you can watch it over and over, of course, with the transcript. It's going to be great. It's going to be fun. Then, uh, let's see, what else did I want to tell you? Then, March 30th is another S. Stewart hour, but then also on April 11th, I've got uh, Nataba Africa Tours with Robin and, uh, Robin and, is it Robin? Yes, and Stella uh, Mountain. They're going to be on the show. We're going to talk Africa, and uh, I think it's going to be great. All right, let's see. Is Nancy ready yet? I don't think Nancy's ready yet. Oh, Nancy is ready yet, so here we go. All right. Um, yes, so Nancy, I'm going to turn you on just a second. Lena wants, wants you guys to know that if you'd like to go ahead and check out her new Facebook group, it's called Travel Agent Hacks, please do it. H-A-C-K-S, Travel Agent Hacks. It's pretty cool. So I'm all for it. Everybody, you want me to promote something you got going on? Let me know. It'd be my pleasure to do it. All right, Nancy, hang on here. I gotta find you. Sam's in the house. Hi, Sam. I uh, hang on here. Where are you, Nancy? Where are you, Nancy? Da, 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 da. Wait a minute, Nancy. I know you're here, but now I don't see you. Wait a minute. I'm gonna find you. There's Sam. Um, this is really strange, Nancy. I don't. Um, I don't see you. Very, very weird. All right, here we go, Nancy. I found you now. Now you can't get away from me. Hold on, everybody. This is kind of weird. No, Nancy, you come, you, you coming in and out there. I think the connection may not work. I can't bring you in. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Weird stuff's going on, and we got to get. Oh, here we go. Unmute. Let's try it one more time. Nancy. <laughs> Hey, Stuart, can you hear me? I can. We can all hear you. Welcome. Yay. How are you? I'm fabulous. Share your story, please. Okay. I have two successes for the month of January. Yes. I, uh, last summer, I had already organized a third annual group tour from Portland, Maine, bus trip to Quebec City for the Winter Carnival. And uh, it went well. Uh, it was on its way to filling up. When I was on a fam trip in Iceland and I heard about the Women's March in Washington, which happened to be the week prior, the weekend prior to my Quebec City trip. But I, while I was away, I emailed my coach company and ended up with the bus and took a group down to Washington, D.C. for the Women's March, which was a big success because I had um, uh, 
55 people on the coach plus 20 people on the wait list for that. And I helped another group uh, get a bus that uh, they were having trouble. So I helped secure one, one other coach for them and uh, made a little bit of money on that and booked the hotel for the driver for that group too. Anyway, yeah, it's worth That's it. Wonderful. So one, one, one group inspired another group, and you took advantage of an opportunity, which everyone, keep your eyes and ears open, right? It, right. That's the thing, Nancy, too. It doesn't have to be a cruise. It doesn't have to be a, a, a tour of Europe or something. It could be local right here, a motor coach trip. Good money, get people on your list, and you build a, a client list. One thing leads to another, and you ended up with two groups. That's great. And a few people from the group uh, from Washington, D.C., wanted to go back when it wasn't so cold and maybe Cherry Blossom Festival. Yeah. Fortunately, that uh, that trip never took off took off the ground. I don't know why. Maybe it was too close to the same time or um, I don't know. I don't know why. But I do also have a group coming up for the end of April going down to New York City. Um, Wonderful. Through the uh, a local Southern Maine Healthcare that found out that I was doing this type of thing and they contacted me. Um, the only thing with that group, it was the activities committee for the hospital that was trying to get some stuff going. And I tried to do a contract with them to prepay a $200 deposit because they're just a volunteer club. They didn't have the money. So I just kind of said, okay, this time, but, you know. I don't know how else you would, you would deal with well, that. The challenge is if they don't have the money, they don't have the money. You have to, you have to, you have to make a judgment call. Is it worth you putting out the money, or do they have it? They don't want to give it to you, or they just don't, and you front it. It's a risk. What level of risk? Let me ask you this final question, which is, 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 was there a big aha moment? Something big? Was there something you did for the first time that was like, wow, this worked really well, or was there something you learned that you wish you had done that you're going to do next time? Was there uh, an aha moment you can share about these experiences? Ooh. Well, the um, with the women's march group, it was a it was a, a 52 women, one husband, and two teenage boys. Okay. So um, it was a it, it was a group of strong, strong, independent women. Okay. Um, I think. Uh, Probably one aha was that I was I'm a, my own lone soldier here, and I, because I had 20 people on the list, I thought that maybe I could somehow get help those people get there too, and get a van and do all this other thing. But the, my aha was that that was too much; that I could yeah. just stick with what I had and um, do it the right way, and not try and spread myself too thin. So that's what I did. That's, and that's I a know, great lesson. Yeah. So. It's a great lesson. Listen up, everybody. You, you got people on that wait list. They're, they're begging to come. You see more opportunity. Make a couple more bucks. But all of a sudden, it, it takes you into a, you know, you're, you're sort of an overflow mode, uh, mentally, physically, and uh, it could have this, you had great success with the core group, but by going a little bit extra, could have broken it could have really broken it. So uh, that's okay because the next time you do something like this and listen up, everybody, the, you can go back and say, look, hey, last time we sold out. In fact, we oversold and there was a wait list. So if you want in, get in early so you can leverage that. Good choice. Nancy, thank you for sharing to be the first on the solo series here, the solo success series. Thanks, Stuart. Keep up the good work. Thank you. You keep up the good work. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute you again. Hold on there. I'm going to mute Nancy. All right, if anybody else has a story to share, we don't have to share just one story. We can share as many as possible to inspire you to greatness. Now, I'm waiting for more questions, issues, challenges to come in. i got a whole list of stuff here, but I want to share something. This was a learning experience for me that I put, uh, I put some training into practice. Remember I've told you that it's not our job to go sell our great ideas to groups. So, so many times I've been forwarded emails or I've heard stories from agents who say, I have this great idea, here's the email I sent to the owner of this store, to the uh, president of this company, to the person who's in charge of this group, and they're not calling me back, they're not responding to my email, or they just said, no, not interested, or I had the meeting, I presented my great ideas, and I never heard back. Well, And, and, and friends, that's not the way to do it.
the way to do it is to get in the door, right, and find out if they've got a problem. Because if they've got a problem and group travel can be the solution to their problem, you've got an opportunity. Let me give you a wonderful case in point to illustrate this. I am a member of the Memphis Convention and Visitors Bureau here, and uh, it's been my desire to, to do two things with them. Uh, number one, I'd love to be their keynote speaker. They do a, a big convention here every year. And number two, I wanted to uh, propose the idea to do a group boot camp here in Memphis. We talked about this last time we were together. Right, so I so forget the keynote thing for just a second. But uh, I, I've been sort of I've had this idea, and I finally got my way in the door to meet with the CMO, the chief marketing, the top person in the organization to present my idea to to work with them to bring in travel professionals to do a group boot camp, use the the, you know, the members of the convention and visitors bureau, and it's all win win win. I had a whole plan. I even made up a hot sheet, a one page, a one sheet with all the details which of course I did not send in advance, but she knew what I was coming in to talk about. So we sat there, we had a little light conversation, I had never met her before, and we found some common ground because I've met a couple of people on her team, a couple of people on her team have actually seen me speak, and I knew I, I, I wasn't going to hit her with the keynote thing because I already set the precedent for what I wanted to talk about, which was, a, which was an event here in Memphis. So my, the first question I asked was, I said, hey, Regina, I said, uh, so how important is travel agent business here in Memphis? Is this something you're looking to increase? Now, if she had answered, uh, well, it's, it's very important. We, we need a lot of travel agents bringing business here and groups here. I'm excited to hear your proposal because not only are we going to get agents here, we could do sort of a, a, a training sort of fam trip. We can show off our city, and, and these are going to be group-focused agents. It's all win-win. And, and she said that. And, and then she changed the whole subject on me. She said, however, Stuart, your timing is perfect. I said, great. She said to talk about our annual convention. She changed the whole topic of the meeting to talk about what her need was, what her problem was, and her problem was we're, we're late putting together our convention for June. You're a speaker. I've heard good stuff about you. Let's have a conversation about that. I didn't go in wanting to sell that. I went in wanting to sell something else, but she told me about a problem she was having, so I quickly took my little folder, tucked it away, and sat back, and we, had, we met for almost an hour and a half talking about that. And, and, and I, at the end, I said, listen, is, this, is there an opportunity to, to talk about this event here? And she said, perhaps, but not right now. We've got to work on the convention. So if I had not, if I had gone, gone in with guns blasting, you know, put the, uh, put the proposal in front of her, tried to sell my idea, she probably would have said no because her mind was elsewhere. And she may have never even brought up the opportunity to speak. So, so for me, it's potentially great news because I hope to be a speaker there and eventually do this event here. For you guys, it's not so great news because you were thinking, oh, Stuart, we were going to come visit you and, and tour Memphis and, and have a fam slash training program in Memphis. That's not going to happen immediately, but I don't discount it. Uh, you know, if I got something on my bucket list, I'd do it, but I'd hope to have them as my partners. So my point, friends, is it's a, when you just ask that question, hey, is this your problem? And they don't validate that's the problem. You, you, that's it. Stop. Do not pass go. Do not collect 200. you got to find out what the problem is, and it turns out she revealed it. Has this ever happened to you where you went in with one goal and you walked out with something else? Tell me about it. Let's share. Let me check the question board here. No one else has typed in. Is it just coming through slow? Uh, all right. I need questions. I need issues. I need comments about what we're talking about. And I'm going to go to this list right here. Hold on there. Um, okay. Yes. And this was Sam had sent this in. Thank you, Sam. 
and this was about uh, this had really has a lot to do with the relationship selling we were just talking about and this is a, a Sam success story this was uh, reiterated on a show that uh, I did with Mike Marsh if you guys know Mike Marsh he's awesome by the way he's got a huge show coming up Thursday with a, with a, a pretty famous publisher and speaker you should check out Jill some I forget her last name but that, that's going to be on Thursday so basically um, Sam was saying that she was so focused on selling and felt like she was complicating things and then she realized she was guilty of focus on selling and, and not helping people so what Sam did was she put a list together about 15 past clients listen why can't you guys do this and realized that she had been out of touch with them and called each one of 15 people for a chat and she caught up to see what was new in their lives so it was purely a social call and by the way, that's what I used to get in the door to meet people. Yesterday, I went downtown Memphis, and I met somebody who was a, also a, a professional speaker. Um, she's published books. She's a big wig, a big deal, and I asked her for 15 minutes. She gave me 45 minutes, and I have a new friend. I wasn't selling anything but just my friendship. So at the end, Sam says she asked if she could talk to them for a minute about a small group tour of Ireland she was hosting that she thought they might enjoy. And and as a result, listen, four couples were interested and asked for information. Two couples signed up, and she's phoning in the deposits today. And when she sent this in, it was yesterday. And then, get get this, she, she called that couple. She called that couple back, and she said, hey, do you have someone you'd like to invite? And they asked her to forward the information, and they would forward it to see if and, – and, see, and, that, and that's the – going back to number two that Sam sent in – Number two, listen, everybody, ask the question. And this is what Sam's saying. Do you have another couple who would like to join you? Who else do you want to travel with? As Sam says, it's a no-risk question. Most recently, I'm reading what Sam said, an Alaska cruise that started out with one couple has grown to five couples simply by asking that question. Three of those couples booked the highest category suites, and the other two booked balconies. And it's all because Sam took an initiative and asked a simple, harmless question. Do you have another couple who would like to join you? Friends, use your own words and say, hey, who, who, what friends do you have that you'd love to travel with? I did that with my river cruise. By the way, I'm a little over 30 days away from my own river cruise. I'm hosting it. I'm so excited. It's my family. It's friends. And we had a recent cancellation, too. These things happened. Thankfully, they had insurance. It's a good news story that they had insurance. Okay, but I just want to let you know, I uh, want to share a couple of these good news stories from Sam to inspire your good news stories, questions, comments, what's working for you, what's not. Let's get down to business. What else we got? Nancy said, looking forward to working with the Portland seniors, how to encourage them to think about traveling outside the box instead of the same old movie and lunch, nature walks, dances in town. She asked them to submit a bucket list, but they had uh, um, a bucket list. And they, they, they should, uh, hold on here, oh, to do more tours, to, to do new stuff, if you have new, fresh ideas. So basically what Nancy's doing, she's going to a senior organization, and they just do, they just do lunch, at, lunch in a movie. She's saying, well, let's get on a bus, let's get on a coach, let's go someplace, let's do a day tour. Friends, have you ever considered doing day tours? Who here is also doing motor coach tours, day tours, trips to uh, explore? And, and once they got the bug, once they see that you're great, they love what you do, they'll hire you to take them to Europe, take them on a river cruise, take them on an ocean cruise. You know, so don't you, you don't have to go for the big, the big stuff first. Start small, especially if these people don't know you and they may not trust you yet to do the big stuff. Maybe they've got another agent who's never suggested doing small little stuff that adds up. It's profitable. You build your list. You build your list in the process. Lena says, uh, I'm going to read this. got to put my glass on because I can't see. I like to start booking space at places like the local library to do talks. It's free exposure, but you cannot sell anything there. Any ideas of how to get people to get in touch with me after the presentation other than asking for their contact information? So this is this is great. So th there's two parts to this. Alina is going out and she's doing little presentations, inviting people to come, which I endorse for all of you to do, whether it's quarterly or monthly, 
but but just show off what you know. You, you, you give yourself credit. You guys know a lot more than the average Joe out there. So go share your passion, share your love, even if it's 15 minutes. And and I don't, Lena, I don't know what you're talking about, but um, if it's about river cruising or if you have a specific passion or whatever. So th that's number one. The part two is how do you get people in touch after? Here's the thing. You know, you you can you can ask people. Uh, uh, you 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 can no hang on you can easily give out a flyer with your contact information which of course you will you can easily give out business cards which has your contact information and I'm sure you will but then it, it's up to them to contact you so right so a lot of times we we do a networking event and we sit back and we wait and we say well I gave out a hundred cards or fifty flyers or twenty two business cards or whatnot and we wait for the phone to ring and it and it doesn't ring. The whole idea is we, I would hope that, uh, two things, that there's a next step. So, Lena, whatever event you're doing, you always want to have a next step. You always want to have the next opportunity for the people who have attended to get more information. So it can, I would never, ever do an event that's just a standalone, one-time, over-and-done-with event. So step one would be this one event you're doing. And then in the agenda, you can see before they even get there, and of course when they're there, you're going to go through the agenda so they know what to expect, and you're going to deliver to that agenda. It's it's going to have whatever that next step is, and that next step could be, if you'd like my um, my PDF that gives you the ten best packing tips. I know I use that a lot, but I'm just saying there's got to be a so folks, if you want me to send you. The, the, the two-page flyer I made up of my best tips, my best travel tips, um, please give me your email address and I'm happy to send it to you. Or, today we talked about just what is a river cruise and what's it all about, and next time we're together, we're going to uh, focus on the Rhine River. Because that's a, I love the Rhine River, and I was just there. I want to share you some pictures, a little geography, a little history. So please, while you're here, folks, sign up, and let's reserve your spot now. You see? So, Lena, that's what I would do and for everybody. Make sure that whenever you do an event, it's got the next step. And, 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 and don't, don't kind of do this haphazard. Really set sort of a, a business plan, a marketing plan. This is step one. This is step two. This is step three. You want to get the people closer and closer to you. You want to get them to love you more and more. And you want to see if they've got problems you can solve. And maybe it is the Alaska cruise, the river cruise. Maybe it is like Nancy's doing, a motor coach tour. Okay, but, but bring them down the road and, and, and get them to know you and love you and don't sell because if you sell they're not going to come back they're going to feel uncomfortable so be as casual as possible but purposeful how's that Lena be casual but purposeful it's sort of like a breadcrumb trail lead them along get them wanting more of you let's see here we've got more I want to see if we've got any comments or questions Moon um, I have your email address why do I have your email address? Oh, so Nancy, travel tips, please. Oh, you want travel tips from me? Hang on, you give me your email address. What's going on here? Perfect. Oh, good, Lena, so you like that. Um, wait a minute, how come you guys give me your email address? You, Deborah says, please send me your packing trips tips. I don't have packing tips. I use, <laughs> I use as an example. I need your packing tips. I don't know. I've never written down my – I have tips coming out of my nose from every other thing in the world with groups and, and business, but I don't have that. Oh, always an example. Okay, I got it, Monique. Thank you. Because I'm like, oh, my goodness, I was just using it as an example. But does that make sense? Um, I know I have to listen to myself. Well, that's how I can't listen to myself. I, sometimes I have no idea what I'm talking about or what I've just said. But I hope that works for you guys because, you know, if you look at, too, the group launch sequence that I sure hope you're using. And, Lynn, I can't wait to hear from you to see what's going on with your group to see which direction you took when we talked about that. But when the group launch sequence, right, 
that's it's the sequence of events whether you do them live and in person or you do them virtually if you do them on a conference call on the telephone if you use a go to webin or any free webcasting service or Skype uh, it's a series of events that makes them want to come back the next time to get more information and, and and you know another great idea, Linda, is that well, and everybody, why not do? Let's say you're not promoting a specific group. You're all you're doing is building your list. You're going out there, networking, meeting more people. Which which because all the business you need, my friends, it's in your own backyard. All the business you could ever ask for a dream of is right there in your own backyard. So whatever your passion is, that's why the, the more you niche, the better you're going to do, my friends. Don't worry about missing out on other business. Do the business you want. Hey, Mickey's in the house. So many people are joining. This is great. Big, huge advocate of that. And why can't you schedule a monthly get together? And this is meeting and say it meeting one of four, meeting two of four, three of four, four of four. And at meeting four of four, I don't know. You're gonna you that that's the meeting you're gonna bring in your carnival rep, your Royal Caribbean rep, your Alma Water Race rep, your Palace Resorts rep. Uh, you know, something, something cool, something fun. Um, you know, I'm not saying you have to give out things, give out freebies, but uh, the, the, go, go out and talk about what you want to talk about, love to talk about. Have a purpose in mind, and just not to sell, but to build your list so that that the, you can you can finally be the group leader and you be the group leader. That's I'm going to ask you guys that question. How many of you have been? The group leader before, I want to hear from you. Maybe you'll turn your microphone on. I want to hear your story because I think we're missing out on a big opportunity. We're depending on another group leader that we have to find or create that we're not being the group leader ourselves, and I think we can. And I think, Lena, I don't know if that's what you had in mind, but folks, if you're doing events and you don't, you're not pursuing a particular group right now, that's how you build your list, and that's how you position yourself as a group leader. They're a place there where you want to go. So why go alone? Go with fun and interesting people who are coming to all of these events. You know, and, and you could actually do a little survey too and, and tell everybody, hey, you know, this is our second time together. I'm really grateful you're here. I didn't realize there was such a big interest in cruising the Danube River. So I'm thinking of doing one because I want to go. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Kind of pepper it in, sprinkle it, and let's see what we got. Uh, Jan says, um, could I share about my group? I'll speak. All right, Jan. Here we go, Jan. I'm going to put your microphone on. This is so awesome. Thank you. I am so grateful that you are being bold. Here we go. We're going to unmute Jan. Jan, are we coming in loud and clear? Hello. Hello. Welcome. Thanks. Hi, Stuart. Well, okay, I'm going to be a little vulnerable today. Is that Thank okay? you. And you know what? When we're vulnerable, we have a growth moment. So this is a growth moment for you and for all of us. So thank you. Great respect. Great courage. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I started a group. At the, actually, I didn't start it. The, um, the leader came to me two years ago almost asking to put together a reformation tour because 2017 is the uh, 500th anniversary of the beginning of the Reformation. Okay. And we're going to Germany, Strasbourg, France, and Switzerland because these are the places where the Reformation, you know, would happen pivotal mm. moments and, and yes. things. So the client came to me and uh, we, we went through what tour we had. We, I had a tour operator that had a great tour and we changed it to uh, our uh, specifications and um, and then I introduced the group launch sequence to them. They did not like the idea. <laughs> they jumped ahead and instead of taking things in a measured timely manner because after all we're two years out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The client jumped ahead. She ish, she created her own brochure. She created her own meeting two years ahead of time. Pulled all these people in, and then tried to create urgency. Mm -hmm. Now nobody believed there was urgency two years before. Mm -hmm. 
And so we got off to a bad start and they continually said to me, you're the expert, you're the expert, but then paid no attention to me. Now we're in the year of, and I have, uh, back last year, I said, you know, I want to help you make this happen. We went to another person mm -hmm. who was a, uh, a leader, an influencer, and asked him to kind of step into the role of creating a group, you know, bringing his people into the group. He hasn't really done very much for that, but okay, okay I'm I'm dragging this out, and I'm sorry about that. That's all right. What we've done is creates about four different uh, avenues to bring people into the group, and right now there are 19 people, and we need 20 for it to be a guaranteed okay departure. So this is good. Yeah. I've got people who are who have come to us from Texas saying we want to come on your tour. Great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've we've accepted them. I've had somebody else who's come to me from Texas and said, I have friends who might be interested in your tour. Can I book into your tour? And she's a travel agent. I said, yes. And, I, and then I went back to the tour operator and asked them to put a small number on their website mm -hmm. that if people came to them, mm -hmm. that they could book into it. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to clean this up. Okay. And um, clean it up, meaning to top it off, sell it out, get it done. Exactly. Trying to get it done without taking over too much responsibility because they agreed that they would be the Pied Piper. Yeah. But I've also put time and, and money into this, so I mm -hmm. have a an interest in it too. Mm -hmm. I think the cautionary tale I want to tell is mm -hmm. I, I I think that the group launch sequence mm -hmm. in a timely manner mm -hmm. would have been excellent mm. yeah. had they allowed me to be the expert that they kept telling me I was. Right. I think it's going to happen. I'm sure it's going to happen, mm -hmm. but it's been messy, just yeah. messy. Well, so I've learned something. Yeah. Absolutely, and uh, this is great to share. And folks, and I know I think Lynn's on too. She had the same experience, Jan. That uh, that uh, particularly other people in in other businesses, they the way they market is going to be different the way we market. Let's say, and in some cases they will let you uh, and say, okay, we're we're doing it your way, Jan or Lynn, whoever it is. This is great. We love it. And in some cases you're going to get pushback. You know why? And, and listen, and John, I'll let you go in just a second. And listen, everybody, that's because everyone is jumping up and down. They're so excited. Let's just do it. They're going to come in. We'll do it my way. Don't worry. Everyone says they're going to go. And then all of a sudden, you put a price point out, and 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 then then you got to back into marketing and selling it. Then it becomes a okay. If you book, I'll book. If you book, I'll book. It, it just it doesn't work. It, it it it's it's trying to build momentum after the big announcement is made, and it's like. Like when's the last time you know of a restaurant that opened its doors and then sent out press releases and tried to get people to come in? No. The most successful smart restaurants, they tell the world they invite in people for test things and they sprinkle out stuff and they get people excited and they have a ribbon coming and boom, people are lined up out the door. Mm -hmm. And that's what you want. So, folks, this is what we're up against out there and, and you know so, – you got to make that decision that that right hand that if they're not going to do it the right way that you know in your heart of hearts is the right way you try to give examples try to give testimonials and, and Jan you've just experienced this so so you can use this in the future saying look I've done it where we, where we just come out with the price and we start playing and it doesn't work trust me it won't work you want to maximize you want to get deposits now you want to sell us out so and then we could do a series of launches like I did for my river cruise too so mm -hmm. um, I, you know I'm glad that you have shared this Jen to show that that um, it's important that we stay confident and resolute because w w with few exceptions I am convinced and I know you are too that the group launch sequence building momentum like Every new business, when they launch a book, when they open a restaurant, when they launch a new car, they build the momentum first. They pre-sell it, remove any 
uh, any uh, ne negative questions, any trepidations, any fears, any concerns before. They're all removed. So when you say, bing, 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 I'll take your money, they're ready to pay. They're ready. I am so convinced now that um, the launch sequence is absolutely the way to go and that doing it my way or the highway, <laughs> I'm not going to do it the other way. And, that, and, I, and if they're going to press me, then I think I have to step out because I already know what frustration you can experience. Yep. So thank you for that, how, uh, Stuart, because I really do um, appreciate all that you're teaching, and it's you bet. true. My pleasure. Jen, thank you very much for sharing your story and uh, sharing a best practice here, learning opportunity, for being courageous, putting your microphone on, and thanks for being in boot camp. Mm, you're welcome. Bye, Jen. All right, I'm going to mute you. Hold on there. All right, let's see what else we got coming up. That's great, folks. You know, and I know the temptation is there for, for, for us too to just to roll right out with the price to start collecting, but, but it just won't work in most cases. It won't work. Okay, uh, let's see. Cheryl says here, Cheryl says, have you used the landing page to collect emails? Absolutely. Uh, you can you so that we're going back to the meeting thing here, and I know Lena, you've got a question uh, or comment, that you, and I'm going to get to you in just a second. Uh, a landing page, I think, is is critical. I think that on your website, it it should be very easy, very simple, and of course, I'm talking like I should be doing it too. But on my website right now, I don't have that because I don't have a structure in place. So I'm guilty of not doing this. I will for my new business that I'm going to be starting called. Solopreneur Network. You didn't hear that from me because it's in pre-beta, beta, beta. But that, or, or, or I already built that in. You want to have that on your site because when p people are going to check you out, right, Cheryl? So if you, before they come to see you speak, Lena and Cheryl and everybody, before they come to one of your events where you're going to teach, they're going to check you out. And maybe they can't come, and they just want to. They want to get the replay, or they want to still want to get the free PDF. So you want to have a little box, that, and and you know what? Don't. Sometimes we on those those question boxes or the sign up, we ask for too much. Do you guys notice now what the trend has been? First name, email address. That's it. First name, email address, because if you make the, the, the barrier to entry, if you make the, the entry too complicated, I'm not going to reveal my last name, my home address, and, and answer these survey questions. No, I'm done. I'm gone. I'm out. But I'll give you my name and email address, especially if I know I can unsubscribe at any time. And, and even working with a first name and an email address, fine. You, you, there's going to be. You want to get them on your list and bring them down that path. So Cheryl, yes, and I'm glad you asked that. All right, Lena says, hold on. I usually agree with you, Stuart, but regarding your group sequence, I'm not sure about not telling people the price. Uh, this is interesting. Okay, I think that people will hesitate if they have no idea what the price is. I want to sell South Africa, and I find that many people think it's way out of their price range. But South Africa is not as expensive as many think. So isn't that one of the selling points? you bring up a very, very great point, especially for a trip that most people have no idea what it will cost. So this is a great question. Jan, weigh in. Everybody weigh in. What do you guys think? I, uh, you know, and, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand resolute. However, if it's, if it's an unusual trip like this, perhaps, a range. No, not, now I'm thinking out loud here. I wouldn't say a range because everyone is going to think it's going to come in at the, they're going to want it to come in at the lowest level. So perhaps, Lena and everybody, if, if a price is a real big issue and they want to know about if you have crunched all the numbers and created the package. So if you, if you, Definitely know the numbers because you don't want to quote a number unless you are firm and you know what the number is going to be. Maybe you can take the high end of the spectrum because this is what I did for my river cruise, friends. Knock, knock. Why didn't I think of this? Who's there? Stuart. Hello. And say, oh, the, the highest level stateroom we're going to sell for two people, including everything, 
is not even going to be, and I'm making this up, it won't even be close to $15,000 a couple. The most expensive one, the highest level, won't come near $15,000. So would you agree with me then that you can, you can address this without giving up that magical price point? Because I'm telling you, my friends, if you do, then they're going to judge it without hearing the magnificent package. All the things that are included, how you're going to do the three things that that's your job to do. Reduce stress and risk, increase value and convenience, and transform the whole experience. If you just sell the number, it becomes a commodity. They're going to shop the number and say, that's too high, I can get it for cheaper. And they don't even know what they're shopping yet. So, what if, Lena, tell me what you think, and everybody, what if you did that? Because I actually did that with the River Cruise. They were begging me, my mom. <laughs> I'm serious. So I gave a higher number, and I quoted on the highest level, so they realized that. And listen, there we got some luxury people out there. They want the sweets. They want the sweets. So don't discount that. But you can say, hey, if you the sweets are... The highest level that we're going to be blocking, and don't give them a lot of information. Don't give them category numbers. We're not going to come close to 15 grand for a couple, including you, know, including the truth, including everything, because I'm going to create a package you're going to love. Why am I going to give you a package? Because I don't want you to miss anything. If I give you the bare bones stripped down off the shelf package, you're going to come up and you're going to hunt me down because you're going to be so sad you missed so much. Tell me if that works for you. Hang on. Get any, uh, get any old bifocals here. They're not bifocals. I'm kidding. They're one power glasses. I can't read small type. It's a conspiracy. The whole world has decreased the size of their fonts and I can't see it. It's a conspiracy against me. Mickey says, I took a group to China last summer. I'm working on my next one now. Congratulations, Mickey. China. Wow. I've never been. I want to go. And I'm so impressed. This is that's a big that's a that's a major group. That's great, Mickey. Congratulations. Keep us in the loop, please. And tell us, is boot camp working for you? Are you using any of the tools? Are the things that's not working that you wish boot camp that I can offer that we can offer you? Great continued success. Um, Nancy says, less messy when you are the group leader and coordinator. Affinity group leaders need their own version of the group launch sequence. Yeah. So we're getting back to now that comment about you guys being the group leader, which, I, I you know, if you haven't done it yet, what's holding you back? Um, Sam says, put on your mic. All right, Sam, hang on now. I'm going to put your mic on. Hang on, not just yet. Let me just read here. I've got a whole bunch of stuff coming in, and I'm so grateful, friends. Gina says, position it as affordable starting at this, at this going to that. Right, so so right, we're getting back to the price point conversation, which is at least at least set the expectation that it won't be any higher than this. And the people who've got the cash, they'll be like, oh, all right, if that's all it is, maybe I can upgrade and get something bigger. And if you tell people, hey, it's not going to go any higher than this, is this is the most expensive stateroom we have, they're going to be like, okay, so there's going to be choices because that's way over our budget. You haven't lost them. Okay, position as affordable. I get that, Gina. I'm on, I get it. Um, and Nancy says, "What about offering the early bird discount?" Uh, we could. I'm not sure we're gonna have time to dive into that, but I, 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 I hate using the word discount. But, but if you, if you're gonna do something with the numbers, because you don't want the people after if they missed it, you don't want them after to say, "Oh, I'm not gonna go now because uh, they're they're all paying less and I'm paying more." What you can do is for one day only take deposits, you know, when you open up to take, and, and you can say whoever deposits today, um, uh, you, you uh, this is your rate, but basically go out with the regular rates and just say, if you deposit today, you, you, you get a $100 shipboard credit. I, I really don't like doing a monetary dollar discount because people, even if it's 50 bucks, they're like, ah, bummer, I didn't know about this trip till now and I missed out on the discount. I'd rather you add some kind of value, get some kind of a bonus, or that you know they get the first choice of where to be located, or maybe you 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 can combine two categories that are close in price point and give a free upgrade to the higher category, and and after that 48 hour period, if they don't deposit, they don't get that. They just that's it, and this has never been a price variance. I'm really funny about messing around with dollar discounts. I'm just that's a personal thing. Gina says, let me show you that Africa is affordable no more than that. 
I get it. Yep, exactly. Lena says, I agree with you as long as you throw out a number so that people are assured they will be able to afford it. Yep. Um, oh, isn't that nice? See, I always keep this on in case you guys want to text me, but I mentioned to you that my stepson is, uh, is in Italy. And, you know, you, you, these kids, you know, he's going to be 18, and he actually celebrated his 18th birthday in Italy. Pretty cool, right? He's in the choir. So we were trying to coach him to help him deal with, uh, to deal with, uh, y y you know, jet lag and so forth. So of course, you know, kids don't listen. They're young. They they think they're resilient. So here's what he just said. Hold on. Hey guys, this is Jacob using a friend's phone, heading to the hostel, staying at a hostel. Uh, and after a day of touring the Coliseum and the Forum, lucky kid. I will try to call you later. Very tired. Haven't slept, showered, changed clothes for 24 hours. <laughs> you know what? Told you so. Told you so, right? These kids, they think they know it all. I was never like that as a teenager. I would always listen to the advice I got from my grandparents and my mom and dad. <laughs> Not. But it's just funny because I, I told them, I said, dude, if you don't sleep on the plane ride over, you're going to be a zombie the next day. Oh, no, no, I'm fine. I'm young. I'm, I'll, I'll catch catnap. Okay, right. Uh, Jeannie said, uh, an early booking incentive gift. Yep. All right. Cool, cool beans. All right. We got eight minutes left. I want to get to everybody. And so, Sam, I'm coming to you. Sam, I'm going to put your microphone on. Sam's got something to share here. And unmute, Sam. You're on the air. Hi, Stuart. Hi. And good morning, everyone. Um, this has been a great show. I'm learning so much from everybody. Uh, today. The, about, that's the great thing about travel. We're always learning. And I just had something brought to mind last night. I was calling members of my group for Ireland to inquire what they wanted to do about their air and what their preferences were. And after the first three calls, I realized, boy, I really overlooked something because each person that I called said, We'd like to go in a few days early, and can we extend and go to uh, London on our way back? I did not include those options. I didn't even think about those options. My assumption, and again, it's, oh, it comes back to price, I made the assumption that I was probably at the top of everyone's budget, which is right around with air, 4500 per person this trip, and assuming, well, you know, they're not going to want to spend much more than that because I thought we were pushing it there. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to be scrambling today to put together two optional tours, one before or stays, mm -hmm. uh, one before the tour begins and one after into London. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just guilty of these assumptions all the time. It's the same where I live. You, you folks have heard me before. I'm new here. Mm -hmm. And it's a small town, so I'm always assuming people are are uh, not going to want to spend that much. But I've acquired six clients since I've in the past year, and that locally, and four of those are high-end clients. Mm -hmm. I never would have thought, just looking at them, talking to them, that these this is the way they traveled. So um, I thought I got to. You know, I'm just guilty of making assumptions is all yeah. I wanted to say. And I thought I overlooked, mm -hmm. you know, this opportunity to add more to this tour. But I'm going to rectify that today and see what I can do. You know, it. Sam, I'm so grateful you brought this up because uh, we all say in business, so, you know, we want to send higher end, we want more luxury, this kind of stuff. We also all know that luxury is defined by everybody differently. It's uniquely, you know. Heck, at Memphis Airport, they used to have a shop called, you know, it was all luxury and everything was $10. They called it luxury, you know, to some people that's luxury. But the, the, the point is, uh, number two, that we, we often put our own judgment and that's normal. Like uh, for me, I might have said, oh gosh, that's, you know, I would never consider that but because uh, that, that's above my budget. But the guy who lives across the street, he may always go for that upgrade and, you know, and so forth, and he doesn't think anything of it. It's all about that concept of trading up. We, all of us, while while we may be frugal in some areas, we may be luxurious and want to treat ourselves and trade up in others, and it's very personal. So, Sam, if I might paraphrase here, what the takeaway here is, don't assume, and number two, ask. 
because as long as you know as the travel professional that there are more options to supersize, to add a pre, to add a post, to do something special, all you can do is ask. And it may be one of those aspirational things you uncover, discover about them, and they'll be like, yes, sign us up, we want to do that. And man, you'll be surprised, but Sam, to your point, if you don't ask, you'll never know. Well, one couple lives on a little farm in a modular home, said they wanted to go to Australia, thought they might want to go to a cruise, so I go out to meet with them, and I'm thinking, you know, certain cruise lines and so forth. But when I arrived there, they said, well, we've done our research and online, and we've decided we want to do Oceana, and we'd like a suite. I thought, okay, I can do that, so, you know. So the lesson there is some people, you know, when, they, when I say live frugal, they'll, they'll live small, they'll live small day to day, but then they, then they would rather invest yeah. in travel. And that's what they said. We always splurge on our travel, and um, which is kind of my mindset. Uh, I always, when my family and I travel, we we want to uh, at least for a week, you know, yeah. act like this is how we live all the time, and we stay that's at right. the nice hotels. We get the limo transfers and so forth, private transfers, yeah. because we think uh, we want to um, up our standard of living for a week, you know. Absolutely. So. It's, anyway, it's it. It's I just thought it was funny. I thought, oh my gosh, after all my years in the business and I'm still making these assumptions. <laughs> and that's okay. Every day is an opportunity to learn and right. to help more people get the things they, they truly desire. Hey, Sam, thank Thanks. you for turning your right. mic on and sharing. Good stuff. All right, I'm going to mute you right now. And we just have a couple minutes left, so let's see what else. Uh, Lena is commenting. Great point, Sam. Good luck. She's wishing you good luck. Very cool. Uh, Nancy says, so many... Uh, Someone told me once, never sell to your own wallet. Oh, I love that expression. Never sell to your own wallet. Yeah, that's cool. Your own preferences. Like, you know, <clears throat> I don't eat meat. So I, I, if somebody's coming to visit, I don't want to assume I'm not going to take them to a steakhouse here. You know, this kind of stuff, right? So it's not like all but our own preferences too. But uh, Nancy, your, your quote is, is well received. Gina says, luxury isn't always dollar generated, but experience generated. That's right. It's the experience. What, what, what have you never done at home that you've always wanted to do? What, what, what's on your bucket list? Let's get it done on this trip. You know, and especially may, maybe they're like, oh, I don't know, you know. But maybe if you know of stuff like zip lining, like a hot air balloon, like a, a fancy five course dinner or wine tasting, Make those suggestions. You may hit on something that you may not personally love, but they may be like, oh, they offer that there? They have that? I want to do it. Sign me up. I don't care how much. And there they are living in a small modular home. So thank you, Gina, and thanks, Sam, for inspiring this. Monique says, don't think with your own pocketbook or wallet. Yes, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's right, especially in, in, in our business. Uh, Mickey says, never judge a book by its cover. Indeed. You never know. All right, we've got one and a half minutes left. One and a half minutes left. Who's got, uh, whoa, look who's here. We've got Dan's here. So many people are in the house. Clavier's here. So cool. Krista here. I'm so grateful, everybody. So remember, uh, watch for um, new modules being, I'm going to need time to edit them down. It's, it's all about Pitch Perfect. I'm recording them live on Wednesday's webinar. You don't have to be there live, but they're going to come into boot camp for you guys. And... If uh, I, if I can still get that group boot camp training session for here in Memphis, so you can come visit me, I will do it. But I may do it somewhere around town too, if you guys want to come. Even though I know you guys are already in boot camp. And let me just see if there's any other questions or comments. No, I don't think so. Anybody else? Anything else to add? Any any love to share? Any love to spread here? We got going on. No? Is that it? All right. So here's the deal. The next time we're together, hold on there. Uh, is March 30th. March 30th, and we're going to have another success spotlight. And and whether you pre-plan this or not, I want to uh, please be bold. Turn that microphone on like we had Jan did, like we had Sam did, that we had Nancy did, and and share your story so we can hear it and be inspired by your successes. With that, class dismissed.